Hi, it's Grandpa Bill again. Hebrews 7.25 says, Therefore, He is able to save completely those who come to God through Him, because He always lives to intercede for them. We had lived in Superior for oh, less than a year. When my uncle came by to show Dad his new-to-him 1929 Chevy Coupe, I was out in the front yard digging in the dirt with an old ice pick that I'd found. My uncle called out to me, William, come here and look at this radiator. When I got there, I saw that it looked like the honeycomb in the jar on the kitchen table. He picked me up with one arm and with the other opened the radiator cap to show me that there was water inside the radiator. And then after he had set me on the ground, his face took on this look of wonder as he pointed to the front of the radiator. He said, this radiator is full of water, but it's also full of, of holes. Just look at all of these holes. He then dropped down so that his face was right up next to mine. And he took on what seemed to be a puzzled look. And he asked me the next question. William, how do you suppose water stays in there when this radiator is so full of holes? He then smiled that big Cheshire cat smile that he always had and stood up. Pleased with himself over leaving me with what seemed to be an unanswerable question. My uncle began to whistle a happy-go-lucky song and headed on over to the front door of the house and knocked. And without waiting for anyone really to answer, my uncle yelled out, It's me! and went on in. So there I was, standing in front of my uncle's new car, wondering how to solve the mystery of the radiator that was full of holes but still had no water leaking out of it. With my nose almost touching that radiator, I began to closely inspect all of those honeycomb-shaped holes in the radiator. Well, my uncle chose the wrong little boy to mess with because I intended to solve this mystery for him. He was warmer than a summer breeze. He was softer than a silver hair. He was brighter than the twinkle in his eye as he rested in his easy chair. And I remember how he used to smile and tell me all about the folks back then. And if I had my way, you know I'd be there today. And I'd do it all. Suddenly, I had an idea. What if there was something magic about those holes? They weren't round. Maybe water would come out of a round hole. I ran back to the yard and grabbed the ice pick. You see, I'd poked the ground enough times to know that that ice pick made round holes. And you guessed it. <laughs> I said about making a few more holes in that radiator. And to my glee, to my surprise, every hole I made that was round, water came out of. I was pretty excited about that and was just getting ready to go and tell my uncle what I'd discovered. So there I was, ice pick in one hand, and with my other hand I was touching the wet spot on the radiator proud of myself when out the front door of the house came my uncle and my dad. They were going to check out my uncle's new car, but they caught me in the act of vandalizing it. Romans 8.26 says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, 
But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. When Dad saw what I'd done, he began to take off his belt. I tried to explain, but all that came out of me were whimpers and, and tears. Before I knew it, I was over Dad's knee, and his hand was pulled back to give me the first swat. And just then, my uncle stepped in and stopped Dad. And he announced that he was at fault. He recounted the conversation that he and I had had just before he entered our house. And he finished by explaining that he had caused the curiosity that I had had over that radiator. My uncle had interceded for me. My uncle extended grace to me when I deserved punishment. He told Dad that he would take the blame for what I had done. By experiencing intercession, experiencing my uncle's willingness to take the blame for what I had done, by receiving grace from my uncle, I developed a strong love for him. I also had the concept of grace firmly planted in my mind from that day forward. I fully realized that grace can be defined as free and unmerited favor. Romans 8. 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. You see, God wanted me to understand the concept of grace, because in just a short while, I would be faced with the choice of accepting or rejecting Jesus' grace. It wasn't long until I heard what Jesus had done for me. And I wouldn't have known or wouldn't have been able to comprehend what Jesus really did by going to the cross to die in my place for all the bad things I had done if it hadn't been for my being able to comprehend grace. Because of my uncle's grace, I understood when I heard Jesus was offering his grace to me. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is, is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The payment for even the smallest sin is, is death. But Jesus chose to take that punishment for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us something else. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The grace that Jesus offers is, is wonderful. Not only was our sin imputed to Jesus, but his righteousness was imputed to us. Before this moment, did you know that Jesus interceded for you too? Did you know that Jesus is offering his grace to you just like he did for me? That's right, Jesus died for you just like he died for me. All you have to do is accept that gift the gift of intercession, his gift of grace. But to receive that gift, you have to believe. Believe that Jesus truly is the one and only Son of God. And then you have to openly disclose it. Acts 16.31 says this, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And Romans 10.9 says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One more thing. There's nothing you could ever do to earn your salvation or to 
maintain it or to lose it. No matter what my son might do, for instance, he'd still be my son. No matter what my daughter might do, she would still be my daughter. Once you become a child of God, you are forever a child of God. That can never change. Your salvation is a one-time event. It doesn't happen in a long, drawn-out process. And it isn't something you have to work on to maintain. Once you become a child of God, you can't be no longer a child of God. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You have a blessed day. By the way, the ABCs of Salvation and a sample prayer will be found in the description box below this video.